I'm Stuart Dunn. I've been involved and around FES for the last 13 years, since 1997. First saw a lady called Julie Hill being implanted with electrodes and the research projects were very much the only way to work with FES, functional electrical stimulation, back then in 1997. RT300 is a device produced in the United States by a company, Restorative Therapies Industry. And in 2005, uh, RTI brought the device, so it was a home-based FES device, to the market in both US and UK. The same year, Cyclone took the distribution of the FES cycle, the RT300, and we decided to market it and look at the use of it within the UK. Predominantly, we worked with spinally injured people back then, but the different types of disabilities, or other neuromuscular conditions such as stroke and multiple cirrhosis, are now becoming uh, users of the machine. And there's research papers out there that are looking further into how it can best benefit these different areas. The device, the RT300, um, introduced because there was nothing of its type to be used for FES home therapy. And today we're just going to have a look at a couple of different examples on how to use the FES bike. We'll be attaching myself to it a little later. I'm going to look at somebody that's never used an FES bike before, so we'll be doing a little bit of a trial. Very different to what you're used to at the moment, which is passive exercise bikes. It looks very similar to a passive exercise bike in that the, um, the, the, the cycle in motion will move the legs around. However, the difference between FES and passive cycling is the fact that electrical stimulation from the FES actually triggers muscles and the body will be doing exercise as opposed to the motor moving the legs. We're going to use this electrical cable. It connects to the PDA on the bike through a connection at the bottom here and these cables are split into left and right side and each left and right is split into three cables. We're going to go to the quads, hamstrings and gluteus maximus. Okay. So we take the pads and peel them off. We give those to you. Peel it off the Okay, and then we apply it to the skin with the cable facing outwards. For obvious personal reasons, we're not going to show you connecting to the glues. Okay. Right, so now we've got the pads all fastened up. Um, we're connected to quads hamstrings and on the glutes. What's going to happen is that the bike will start off, Carl will press the go button, so you press the go button on the screen and the bike starts in a warm up phase. So it's going to do two minutes of this. Okay, and it's telling us now that we've got some pads disconnected. So we'll just stop. The bike's going to tra travel through for two minutes without any electricity being delivered into these cables here. Gradually, after the two minutes, we have a phase where the motor starts to turn off its power and the electricity being delivered through the cables starts to take over. So if we've got powerful contractions on the muscles, the muscle power will take over. If we haven't got powerful contractions, the motor will still sit behind so that we can keep pedalling. Yeah. So we're talking somebody now that's been injured for 25 years. 25 years. So even if we weren't to see 
lower motor neurone damage, we still would expect to see a very high level of atrophy. So we might not, for the first six, seven, eight, nine, ten sessions, see the power in the muscles enough to get the bike pedaling. Okay? So in 15 seconds, we're going to start to see electricity being delivered. It was that some faulting out. So now the stimulation's being delivered into the bike. Now, when we get to a certain level, we'll start to see contractions if we're going to see contractions. Okay. Can you feel anything at this moment in time? Nothing at all. Nothing whatsoever at this moment in time. Okay. And do you have any sensation at all? None at all. Right. So, this is where we get to a point where we might want to just restrict the electricity that's going in. If we've got a patient that's got sensation, we want to stop the electricity going in at a point where they start to feel uncomfortable. We can do that quite easily by just tapping a button on the screen that says limit stimulation. Okay, where are we at with stimulation no, 60%. now? 60%. Are we seeing any contractions at all? Not really. So, we, so what we're seeing here it's highly likely somebody with damage to their lower motor neuron because we're relying on the stimulation triggering the reflex arc stimulation that the bike could deliver to get this bike pedaling. Yeah. Now I require a lot lower level than the bike can physically give me. So, mm. now I'm pedalling and I'm requiring 61% of the available stimulation that the bike can give me. That means I can work much, much harder. You're actually physically doing it. Yeah, yeah. My muscles are physically doing it. So, my muscles are physically doing it, not... The machine the motor in the machine, the electrical stimulus from the electronic controller in here is pushing up. Okay, and you can see how long does this go on for? for Generally, you. this is an hour exercise. Is there a time limit that you can't use it? You could go on for an hour and what, come back in 40 minutes, an hour, six hours, ten hours? If I used it for an hour yeah. and then wanted to pedal again, I really need to leave a minimum of 24 hours because the muscles take that long so to come once back. A day. Yeah, once a day. If you were a physically fit person, I'm a I'm going to say that I am a physically mm. fit person, then be quite happy for you to do it every day of the week. So, five strokes, six times a week.